The Superintendent's Advisory Council began on January 28, 2014 to bring representatives from our teaching and support staff units together to work collaboratively on issues facing Brevard Public Schools. We began the process engaging in conversations with the superintendent who provided feedback to senior administration. We also had representatives from departments such as finance, human resources, community relations, and curriculum share data with representatives to help frame future conversations. We use the advisory group as a critical focus group. When we began talking about the things that we might add back if there was new operating money this year, um, and, and they were a tremendous voice in, in providing us really good feedback in that, uh, and that was very important. But one of the aha moments in that was um, as they reported out uh, table by table the things that they felt were very important, one table felt one particular item was not very important at all and maybe shouldn't even be on the list. And the very next table thought it was one of the most important items that we should get back uh, early on. Uh, and that is the challenge that you face. So it helps when we have large, uh, a large group like this come together to talk through those things and give us great feedback. As we entered the 2014-2015 school year, we made significant changes to the purpose and format of these meetings, which was based on member feedback. In particular, we met less often, but for a more sustained period. We integrated teaching and support staff together and focused on dialogue that would lead to recommendations for improvement. We initially planned separately to have the elementary teachers meet, the secondary teachers meet, and the support staff meet. We felt like we'd benefit from you know, having the three groups, obviously, but also in their separate roles. But we found throughout this year that bringing them together and hearing shared perspectives and shared understandings was really, really a valuable part of the process. It's paid some really strong dividends. I was so impressed by the level of commitment from all levels and also the unselfishness because we talked about some hard decisions when it came to looking at the budget list, employee morale, and communication efforts. Next, we began to narrow the scope of topics through consensus of top concerns. These were then placed in survey format and our members went back to the communities they represented to gain valuable field feedback. As we started our advisory group, certainly the first thing we wanted to do was really in, invite them into talking about things that they believe could help all of us uh, make our organization better. What has really evolved from that that we're very proud of, uh, however, is that, that we really then asked them to focus that discussion down to meaningful topics and, and now we are putting them in a position um, not only giving them, them time but budget and really authority to bring forward uh, good recommendations that can help all of us make a difference for some critical things that they identified in, in helping us as an organization get better for everyone. And, and I think that's been a, a very powerful uh, part of this, this effort. Our council members did an outstanding job listening to their peers and giving the superintendent's team valuable feedback that could be focused further into potential action plans. At our final meeting this March that completed the input phase, Groups gather to brainstorm solutions to critical issues. As we move into phase two, I'm really excited to see some of the plans that we created in our work at the zoo to address those priority areas come to fruition. I'm excited to see those groups work together and figure out how we can solve problems now that we kind of have some direction, but actually see that action occur. To me, it's one thing to get together and, and talk about what's wrong, but it's even more important to get together and talk about how can we make it better. And that's what I'm excited to see happen next. The three emerging issues that advisory will tackle in phase two, or the action and implementation phase are, one, improve morale and include measures to recognize staff in their accomplishments. Two, clarify expectations to improve consistency and increase understanding of mandates along with other strategies to improve communications. And three, leverage resources and increase business partner opportunities. The value for me was having the opportunity to have so many 
uh, of our teachers and support employees come together in one place. And, and, and really, uh, let's talk about some difficult things. Sometimes it, it wasn't, uh, it was challenging, uh, but we had opportunity to engage in that kind of conversation and it always coming back to, so what do we do about that? And I just uh, felt that was immensely valuable. I, I gained so much from the experience and I think all of us did. As we look towards the 2015-2016 school year, our advisory council will consist of members who have submitted an application based on their desire to continue the work started in phase one. These teams will take leadership defining the selected plans and begin implementing the positive strategies developed.